What's up guys, Kennedy here and I'd like to welcome you on this episode about truing the wheel all-in-one combo video with this not really nice view which is the wheel that is out of true. It's really annoying, right? Uh, even though we do have like huge amount of uh, tutorials on the internet on how to true the wheel, I do feel personally that they lack most of them, if not all, lack some tips and instructions that would make our life easier with the wheels. I'm not saying I'm the best uh, guy in truing the wheels, uh, but I do have like uh, many years of experience with both road and mountain bike wheels. And I'm just gonna share with you what I've learned over, the, over those years. Uh, I'm gonna try to keep it as short as possible, but I think 20 minutes would be, would be a minimum uh, for this uh, video. I told you also uh, last time that uh, I'm trying to make the quality now in 4k but didn't work quite well for my computer so i'm trying now 2.7 we'll see how it goes if you have any suggestions on um, the uh, quality of the videos just let me know in the comment section all right so we do have a wheel and uh, let's just start not by truing the wheel but saying how and and when and where should we uh, true our wheels uh, first question should we really buy a truing stand no, we do not have to buy a truing stand. It's a very helpful tool. It can be quite pricey, but I would say if you're not going to own like, like me, like many pairs of wheel sets and save some money on truing them, you don't need really a uh, truing stand. And the question number two is then, can we true the wheel on our bike? My answer is yes, we can do it. Uh, I, I've been doing it for many, many years and most of my truing is actually on my bike, um, even with the tire. And that's the question number three. Can we true the wheel with the tire on? Of course we can. Um, ideally, as we, ha as we have it here, we would remove the, um, the tube and, um, and the tire. We will see every everything better, but especially if you're running some tubeless uh, stuff why should you uh, go and and remove those tires you can do some truing some adjustments some tuning of your wheel just with the tire so that's okay uh, the, the next step is what tools should we use now of course we'll need some some um, some tools uh, some tools for the nipples uh, these are this one is made by pro this is uh, one of the cheapest on the market here in Poland that I just bought uh, what I would say about those uh, here, uh, I would say don't buy cheap if it's not recommended by someone because uh, uh, if you don't know if it's really well made, uh, you may be damaging your, your nipples, I'm going to show you that in a minute, uh, and then you're just done with your chewing the wheel and your wheel basically can be also done. So uh, Pro is a very good tool. Uh, like park tool or any good tools will be more pricey but you can be uh, sure that those will hold on to the nipples very very well. Uh, this one actually is one of the cheapest on the market here and this one is uh, okay so I would recommend that. So if you do not know any uh, anyone using some cheap um, uh, tool for the nipples uh, don't buy it. Don't take the risk of uh, damaging your uh, your nipples. Of course there are many types of nipples as you can see we have three sizes already just on this one. Uh, this one comes with uh, those units that you can replace. It doesn't, <laughs> it doesn't come off actually here. Uh, I, I'm able to replace those heads here uh, and uh, use this uh, tool with many different uh, uh, nipples. It looks like this when it's assembled but I'm using actually just this one with this head. Yeah, it's just replaceable. Um, you're gonna need uh, some specific tools for specific uh, wheels, like for example, um, if you've got like Mavic Cross Max, different nip nipples. If you've got like Mavic uh, SLRs, different nipples. So uh, bear that in mind. Another tool is, uh, I don't know how is it called, but this tool uh, is used for holding uh, the um, uh, the spoke while we are um, while we are truing the wheel so it will hold the spoke the spoke will not uh, spin along with the uh, with the nipple so that's the tool we would need for like bladed spokes aero spokes and then um, one of the tools let's let's say that would be 
uh, quite helpful for especially for those who don't have a caliper brakes or V brakes just those who are, who are running who are running basically disc brakes are the zip ties uh, how can we use those zip ties to help us with the truing uh, as you can already see you, you will you will compare the the position of the um, of the, um, the brakes of the calipers of the brake pads and the rim here but if you don't have these brakes here uh, you may want to uh, just mount some mount some two uh, zip ties one of those i would uh, I'm, I'm not going to assemble those i'm just going to show you this uh, i would assemble it just like this just above the rim so that you will see uh, radially whether uh, the, the rim is uh, true or out of true another one just below it I would cut the um, cut the the end of it so that you can maybe also uh, just you know adjust it so that you will see whether it touches the rim or not so zip tie uh, can be also a helpful tool and uh, another one is some oil but you have to be very very caref careful with oil and that's something I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna just um, point out um, in a minute. All right, so we have the tools. Uh, it's uh, it, we have the place. It's all right to have it like like this without the without the tire here on our bike. Now, what do we do uh, with the wheel? First of all, we're not just taking the wheel and starting truing or you know putting some tension or releasing the tension on the spokes. Not it's just wrong first of all we should understand how the wheel works uh, and i'm gonna show you that just in a couple of words as you can see we have the hub here that's the central part of the wheel and the spokes that will connect the hub to the rim right the rim itself uh, is strong it's it's kind of uh, it, it's kind of like a wheel itself as you can see this rim itself holds uh, its shape uh, but by using those uh, spokes we, we will be able to change those shapes to to pull uh, the rim to the to the left to the right or to the um, to the hub uh, now many people say uh, if the rim goes out of true to the left you should release the tension on the spoke on the left side and put some tension on the spoke on the right side and that's kind of true but you should remember that those spokes let's say I'm putting some tension on this spoke on the, on the left side let's just see that this spoke is connected to the flange of the hub and then to the to many other spokes so if you are doing anything with this spoke it will really have impact on uh, other spokes especially those spokes uh, on the opposite side of the wheel uh, and sometimes we're yeah, we're just truing the wheel uh, here uh, and we see it's getting better it's getting better uh, but then on the other side side of the wheel we are getting we are uh, going out of true so remember that now how the truing uh, works let's just see the example of the spoke this is a campagnolo shaman spoke that's the one uh, that uh, that was crushed actually uh, but as you can see we have the spoke that would be the part uh, assembled to the flange of the hub right so it's fastened there and here we have a nipple that is basically a simple nut and this nut will also be assembled to the rim so as you can see I'm just bolting this nut screwing it in by screwing it in, it in what I'm doing I'm shortening a whole distance right of a spoke and a nipple so if I'm shortening it if, if, if I'm shortening it uh, it means that I'm putting some more tension of on the wheel on the spoke and on the wheel if I'm just unscrewing it the whole system becomes longer so we are releasing the tension uh, on the spoke it's quite easy uh, for some riders uh, it's it's been quite difficult to remember uh, should I turn clockwise or counterclockwise just remember if you look from from here from the top you have a simple nut and you are uh, just uh, screwing it in uh, clockwise and unscrewing it counterclockwise that's it it's simple uh, it's it's not really um, a rocket science 
All right, now we do have a wheel that is out of true. We have a, a couple of reasons for the wheel to be out of true. Uh, here we have uh, the, the, the simplest one, I would say, which is uh, a new wheel that was not assembled uh, assemble right. I would say the guy or a woman who was assembling this wheel wasn't a real bike build builder or, or she or he had uh, very, very limited time uh, that he could uh, spend on the wheel. So it's not really uh, well made. The other reason is that we are just using the wheel and it's working, all the nipples are working and it's just uh, going out of true. Another is when we hit something very, very strong. I mean, if you are like mountain biker, you're hitting something like, you know, constantly, uh, but some crash or some really, really strong, strong hit uh, would, uh, you would be able to, to change the structure of our rim, right? So the rim itself uh, will keep to be true, but if we hit it, uh, it can be uh, just, um, just go out of true. So that would be the reason that is most uh, difficult to, uh, to, to fix. Some, sometimes it won't, be, uh, it won't be possible to true the wheel completely, like 100% or less than point, um, uh, 0.5 millimeters. We should remember uh, that as well. Uh, and then the wheel can be out of true uh, like laterally uh, going to the left and to the right side and radially it's called radially right <laughs> uh, going up and down and the third kind of being out of true is the dish of the wheel and that means when we put the wheel uh, on our frame it should be exactly in position with the frame exactly in the middle uh, don't be just uh, don't be afraid that you have the cassette here and maybe something should be like moved no, if you see the tube here, which is the middle of your frame, the, the wheel should be here in the middle. That's like a rule of thumb for most of the bicycles, uh, at least. Uh, and we actually have this problem here on this uh, bike, because um, when I just look at those um, at those chain stays, seat stays, I, I think with my eye, I feel that it goes a little bit to the right. So the dish of the wheel is not made right. Um, but to confirm that, I'm using the caliper. It's super easy, non-scientific <laughs> method. I'm just uh, checking the distance between the, the seat stays and the rim. Uh, I don't really have to measure it. I mean like read how many millimeters it is. I'm just uh, putting now the caliper on the other side and Yes, it confirms that we do have just a little bit uh, of, of a difference. It's like It's like what? A millimeter or so but there is some some uh, difference here. I, I feel I can see some distance here. Uh, normally you would also maybe put your fingers here and feel some distance. There is difference uh, between left and right side. So now we are going to true the wheel. But before that I'm gonna give you another reason, reason for the wheel that is out of true which is really crazy on this bike and that's a, um, a light that is assembled on the on the nipples. I took off this one from the front wheel and it was already better because front wheel was even more out of true. Uh, by putting this on the on the um, nip on the spokes and like pushing it between three different spokes. Th there is one, two, three spokes. Uh, we put some tension on them. I'm gonna show you that. And the wheel comes out of true. So those three spokes have uh, more tension than the others. Uh, so the first thing I'm gonna do is to remove this piece of you know what. So let's just uh, take this off and now we will see even better uh, what's wrong with our with our uh, nipples with our uh, spokes sorry. As I've showed you on the um, video about uh, acoustically uh, tuned uh, Eastern EC90 wheel, uh, you may also try to hear
the difference in the tension. This one seems to be quite all right. So it's not really bad. But um, when we close those uh, calipers, we can see that the wheel is going uh, out of true. So uh, what I'm gonna start with, um, I'm not gonna show you all the process because it actually depends on you how true the wheel, the wheel uh, will be. Um, I'm gonna show you some steps, some, some levels of this work. First off, uh, I'm going to, as you can see, the dish of the wheel was not really true. Um, you have to make sure that the wheel sits very well in the dropout. So you just uh, stand the bike, put the bike on the floor, you, uh, um, you release the quick release and put it once more to be sure that the, the wheel will stay like this when you ride. Uh, I'm gonna release just a bit of the tension on the right side uh, of the spokes and uh, put some more on the left side. Uh, the difference is really, really small. So I'm gonna do like, uh, I'm gonna start with the valve hole, which is here. I'm starting here. I'm going uh, to do like uh, maybe one tenth of a, of a turn. So very, very little. Uh, I'm gonna show you that. So I'm releasing tension here. So remember, unbolting or unscrewing this and I'm gonna do just like that, not more, because we are doing it on all the spokes. And then I will, I will uh, see what's happening with the dish and then I will decide how much of the tension we'll put on the left hand side. So I'm gonna do it right now. All right, this, is, this, this actually helped. Uh, once more what I did was to release uh, some tension on the right side and put some tension on the left side. Um, if you're looking from the top, I would do like um, one tenth or one twelfth of a turn um, to the uh, counterclockwise on the uh, right side and clockwise uh, for the spokes uh, on the left side. Uh, I already saw that even the caliper was already uh, set for, for the, the wrong dish of the wheel. I've just, uh, I've just uh, fixed that. Yeah, so it's centered now and what we are doing now will be actually to, uh, to uh, uh, through the wheel now um, later, laterally. Uh, all right, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna use my barrel adjuster uh, so that uh, by, by uh, shortening the cable, the braking cable, the caliper will go closer and the brakes will uh, get closer and closer, closer to the rim so that finally I will hear some touch. Can you hear that? Okay. We have some, some um, pad rubbing here on the left side, meaning that I would like to put some more tension on the right. Um, very important rule is here not to operate just with one spoke, but uh, you will see how long this, uh, this band on, on the rim, if you will, uh, is. And then find the center of this band, which is, I would say, which is this spoke here. But it goes through like four spokes, one, two, three, four spokes. I'm gonna start um, um, working on the one in the center of this band and then a little bit on, on those uh, that are just uh, next to it. So let's just go back to this rubbing. That's the spoke here. I have to use this uh, tool in order to, um, to hold my spoke because uh, they are, they are um, spinning, they are moving. And now maybe a couple of words. As you can see, it was uh, like, it wasn't even a quarter of a turn. I already uh, see the difference couple of words about using the oil. Some people would tell you that you should oil all those nipples before, uh, before truing uh, from the inside and from the outside. Sometimes you would not have the, uh, the access from the inside, like on this rim, for example, which is tubeless, uh, USD tubeless. So uh, you would do it only from the outside. Uh, as you can see, someone was trying to play with those uh, nipples without oiling them and they were really stuck and all of these here are broken. 
So it's a good um, option to use the oil, but remember, don't use the oil, never use the oil on all the nipples. Use, the, use it only on the, uh, on the nipples that are really stuck on your, um, on your uh, spoke. The problem with the non-bladed spoke, like uh, with those rounded spoke, is that you, you are not able really to hold to them. Um, and that's the problem when they spin. Some people would also uh, uh, put some stickers on the, on the spokes so that they will see whether they are really uh, spinning along with the nipples because that's important for you. You don't want uh, the, um, the spokes to be spinning on only the nipples uh, being screwed in or out uh, of your, on your spokes. So I'm not going to use any oil here. Um, if you were to use uh, oil on all of your nipples, uh, the wheel will be really prone to be getting out of true because those will be simply spinning uh, back and forth, forth uh, when you are riding the wheel. So some would even uh, put some glue on the spokes, on the, on the thread uh, of the spokes so that uh, the, those nipples would really hold on. So be careful with using the oil, use it only if you really have to. What I'm gonna do now is um, put more and more tension on my, on my caliper finding all those spots when the, the rim is uh, touching to my um, to my um, pads. Um, once more, on many tutorials you would hear that first you you uh, through the wheel laterally and then you will see whether it uh, works uh, up and down. In my opinion we should do it simultaneously. Uh, and if I saw here any up and down movement, uh, what do you do? If you see your rim going up, you would uh, put some tension on both right and left um, uh, spoke so that those spokes with more tension would pull the rim down. If you, if you, have, uh, if you just hit something uh, on the road or in the terrain um, and your rim goes down, remember that your spokes are only pulling. They will not be able to push it out. So sometimes maybe uh, putting some more tension just uh, around this this heat um, would help you and, and releasing on the heat would help you uh, with some other miles when you're riding to, uh, to just get the wheel working but it will be difficult uh, to, uh, to do it like super 100% true if it was hit like here from above. Uh, okay, what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna be searching for those rubbing, we have it here, uh, putting some more tension here, releasing here, and I'll, I'll see you in the minute showing you how it works. Okay, I'm back after maybe five or six minutes of uh, chewing the wheel, we just got to this point. Uh, don't look at the tape, because the tape is not really true, the tape on the, on the rim, on the inside of the rim. Uh, but the wheel is almost like 100% true. It's it's much less than one millimeter. I think it's even less, but, but uh, than one than uh, 0.5 millimeters. Um, what I would do, I would those I would do those turn, turns uh, less and less and less and less because we are really like tuning up the wheel right now. Uh, more tension on the braking cable, and now we got to this point where. As you can see, the rim, the pad has, uh, has uh, like a constant, um, uh, how do we call it, the, the pad is touching constantly uh, the rim, meaning that the rim is really, really true. If I was uh, to release the tension just a bit, uh, sometimes I would hear and see that uh, the rim touches the brake, but I'm at this point I'm not able to see whether there is the distance between the pads or here so then when you see when you hear the rubbing rubbing I think maybe it's on the left side I'm pushing it from the right side silence it means okay it was on the left side and then I would just put some more tension on the spoke on the right side and and that's basically it but it's not done we are not done yet uh, now, some people would tell you to uh, remove the wheel once more, put it on the floor and put your weight and push with your weight on the wheel, which is good because it releases the tension 
uh, it makes um, it allows the all this uh, this uh, vectors power of the ve ve um, vector of the power move around the wheel. Uh, but in my opinion, uh, when the, um, the wheel is laced very well and those spokes are quite tight, uh, the weight of our body is too little. But we can simply uh, hold to those spokes like this with your hands and you can easily now just bend those spokes. Sometimes you will hear different noises on your rim, meaning that uh, you are releasing the tension and after doing that, on all the sp uh, spokes, uh, we may notice that the wheel is getting a bit out of true once more. Well, it's not really here. Uh, it's 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 really looking very very well. But this is uh, for you to to know. We should be releasing uh, this tension. If you, we don't do it, uh, we put the uh, the tire once more. We go out riding, and the wheel will, will go out of true. In my practice, actually, I would always, uh, after truing the wheel, maybe one of, or a couple of rides, uh, go back and check it carefully and maybe tune up some of the spokes. If we do it, the wheel will really hold uh, and, 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 and uh, will be just true for thousands and thousands of uh, kilometers. So this is what I wanted to share uh, once more pulling uh, the, the, rim, the spokes on the right side will pull the rim, of course, to the right side. Uh, releasing um, the tension on the left side will help it, help it even more. If we are pulling um, uh, those spokes, we, which are next to each other, we are pulling the rim to the, to the hub, like here, downwards. Um, when we want to uh, center the, the dish of the wheel, we are pulling all the spokes on one side and releasing on the other side. Uh, that's basically it. Uh, thank you for watching. If you have any further suggestions, just put them below in the comments. Uh, please give me s some thumbs up if you like these topics. If you like some other topics like training or anything, you can um, put some suggestions in the comments and give me some thumb, thumb down. Don't be afraid to do it. It really helps me. It's kind of a quick, quick, quick kind of communication between us uh, to choose what's the right video uh, for the next time for you. Once more, thanks for your support. I'm happy having uh, this uh, true wheel right now and I will see you very, very soon. Bye bye.